Well, thanks very much, Lisa. So tell me, how would you define Brand Perth? Brand Perth, I think, is at a very special place. I think there's a greater confidence in Perth right now, and we're starting to realise that through the rather fast growth we've had over the last decade or so, that we're in a pretty special place. I think there's a new level of sophistication. I think there's an appetite for more, more of everything, and there's a greater savvy about Perth people that wasn't as apparent before. So I think realising all of that, those in marketing are aware of how much more specific they need to be in detailing products and uh, brand imaging. And can you tell me, what markets and audiences are you trying to communicate with? From our perspective, the City of Perth needs to talk to several markets, obviously as a local government authority, a capital city uh, authority, we're keen to attract visitation from locals, our regional areas, but then there's also the national and international marketing that we need to do as a global city of substance on the Western Gateway of the Australian continent. So tell me, how's Product Perth evolved over the last few years? Definitely. I mean, there's been a lot of talk about our city, how it's evolved, when you also remember that we're not even 200 years old as a city. I think most people would accept we have come a very long way in under 200 years. But again, also I make the point that in the last 10 years, there has been an exponential growth factor spurred on by the demand for our energy and our resources, but also because there's been a lot of interest in business and having businesses in Perth and Western Australia. I think that uh, our city is really growing in sophistication. We've done a lot at the City of Perth in terms of capital expenditure to do some greater aesthetic touches to our city. Obviously we've upgraded the St George's Terrace area last year. We've done a lot of mall changes. We've also put the Northbridge Piazza into Northbridge. We've unashamedly spent a lot of money to bring a greater aesthetic finish to our capital city and we've knowingly done that ahead of the waterfront work starting this April and in preparation for the amount of work surrounding the link. So we've made our city as enjoyable as it can be to prepare and ready the people for the disruption. And how's all that been received so far? I think we've learned a lot from people needing to be well communicated with. There is generally uh, an acceptance for work to be done, provided people feel that they are in a timely manner well communicated with about imminent works. How has your communication evolved over the last few years? That's something that I'm particularly interested in. I've observed that people are okay provided they have timely notification of all works. We need to remind ourselves as a service authority or a local government service that we need to be very upfront with what work we're intending to undertake and communicate with our stakeholders. Our stakeholders are many and varied. They are property owners, they are ratepayers, they are businesses, government authorities, as well as the daily individuals that might work in the city and commute to and from the suburbs to work in the city. So we have differing groups of stakeholders and obviously a variation in the number of those subject to the hours of the day we're talking about. Of course now the City of Perth is also residential home to many more people than it was say in the late 90s. In the late 90s the residential population of the City of Perth was only around 5,000 people. Now today it is about 20,000 people. So again there's been a very large growth there and those people need to be communicated with strongly because they're here 24-7. And what big things are happening in Perth over the next year? The big challenges for us this year is obviously giving the message out that it is business as usual while we have three precincts under construction, namely the waterfront which will start in April, the link which is already under construction and also Riverside. 
The undertaking of these projects is not actually the City of Perth. The work is being undertaken by the MRA, the Metropolitan Regional Authority. But to the average citizen out there, if they see work going on within the capital city, they would just say it's in the City of Perth. So we need to work very closely with all of the authorities and other groups who are undertaking this work to make sure that we're all giving off the same messaging and that the communication is really robust. And just finally, what do you think those three projects will contribute to the City of Perth? Those three projects are going to significantly increase the capacity of our capital city. And with increased capacity, we are then sending a very strong message out there that our city is open for business. There'll be new buildings being built, which will ultimately hold many more businesses and therefore bring many more employees into the city on a daily basis. So this is growth and this is proof that our city is very successful. And I would just make one other point. With the waterfront, people have been able to use that space. So obviously they're going to feel some loss while that space is cordoned off and being constructed. However, with the Link project, that space was never easily accessible by people. It is going to be an area that we will see uh, you know, returned to the people that previously wasn't usable. The same with the Riverside area. It was utilised, but it wasn't well utilised. So it's going to be cordoned off while the construction's happening then it will be returned to the people in a much more uh, 21st century user-friendly way. Excellent. Thank you, Lisa. You're welcome.